Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So today, I um, want to just spend some time going over the solutions to the exam. Um, Um, okay, if you have any questions about the exam, you can just, um, you know, type in the chat or something or um, unmute yourself, whatever is better for you. Okay. Okay, so the first question, G is a group and A is a subgroup of the center of G. We're supposed to prove A is a normal subgroup of G. Okay, so mostly this is just to Remember, what is the definition of a normal subgroup and what is the definition of the center? So let me remind you, center of G is a set of all, um, let's say um, elements A of G such that A G equals G A for all G. Okay. And we have to show our goal is to show that um, G A G inverse is contained in A or some variation of that. Okay. So let A and A, let G and G. Now we look at G A G inverse. Let's just G G inverse A since A is in the center. And G, G, G inverse is just the identity. Identity times A is just A. And A is an element of A. This shows that G, A, G inverse is a subset of A. This shows that A is normal. And that is pretty much what I was looking for with that question. Okay, uh, any questions about, about that one? Okay. Um, let's move on to question two. I probably have the most to say about this one. So this will take the most time, I guess. Okay, so um, question two, G is this group generated by R and S. So that's my R, R squared equals S squared equals the identity 
and the commutator of S and R squared also equals the identity oops, squared. And then we have a homomorphism phi, well, a possible homomorphism from D4 defined by, well, we just say what is phi of R and phi of S. Phi of R is AB. Phi of S is just B. And we're supposed to prove that phi defines a homomorphism. And then um, something that I had on the exam, but that I later told you not to do, but we can do that in the solution. In, in, okay, we'll also prove that um, phi is one to one and on two. Okay. But, you know, I didn't ask you to do that, but we're going to do it now. That's why. Okay, solution. Okay. So before we actually start, um, you know, working on this question, I we have to understand what do I mean by prove that phi defines a homomorphism. Well, I've told you what phi of R and phi of S is, and R and S generate G. So there's a natural way to get a homomorphism. And that is just whatever R's and S's you have, like, um, remember, natural way to define a homomorphism this would be just by defining phi of like something like r s r s s r and the definition is just going to we define this like a mess of S's and R's. What is phi of that? Well, just take phi of R times phi of S times phi of R times phi of S. Since I've already told you what phi of R and phi of S are, that kind of is the only thing we'd be able to do. Oops, I better be a little bit careful. Okay. So that gives, like, given that you want phi of R to be this thing and phi of S to be that thing, and given that you want to be a phi to be a homomorphism, um, if I like see some R's and S's as an element of G, there's only one thing that phi of that could be. You just have to multiply all the phi of R times phi of S and on and on like that. Okay, and that seems fine, like, um, you might think like, okay, well, that just defines a homomorphism. And so the question is trivial, except for that there's like, the main problem would be that, um, you know, we might try and do this, but um, here we like on the left-hand side, we might have something that uh, is the identity, you know, just by like the relations between R and S, but on the right-hand side, we have something that's like not the identity. Okay, and that would give, that would be a problem because phi of the identity has to be the identity. Okay, so what we need, the point of this question is that we have to check that all the relations of G are preserved when I apply phi. And so this is just, um, this is just a warm up. Is starts the actual solution. Okay, we must check. What do we have to check? We have to check that phi of r squared equals the identity. We have to check that phi of s squared equals the identity. We have to check that the commutator of phi of s and phi of r squared equals the identity. If we check those three things, we're, we're okay.
So that is the plan now. We just, I mean, this is just working in, this is just some equations in D4 we have to check. So let's do that. Okay, um, phi of R is AB, so we have to check AB squared. That's AB, AB. Um, remember BA is just A cubed B. We're in D, we're living in D4 now. That's D4. Okay, so BA is A cubed B. We have A, A cubed BB. <clears throat> In other words, we have A to the fourth B squared, which is identity times identity, which is identity. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, and again, let me just reiterate what the problem could be. The problem is, is that R squared is the identity, but imagine that phi of R times phi of R was, imagine, what is, if it wasn't the identity, then um, this would be a problem because, you know, we say that we want phi of R squared to be phi of R times phi of R, but um, phi of R times phi of R always has to be the identity of in, in D4. Okay. So that's why we're checking all these things. If one of these equations doesn't hold, our our our, um, our phi will will kind of like break down. Okay. Now we check um, for phi of s. Phi of s is b, so we have to check b squared. So let's phi of s squared. That's b squared. In D4, B squared is the identity, so we have the identity, and that's fine. That's what we want. And now, um, so we have to check, is this squared the identity? Okay, first, so phi of S, is um, B, phi of R is AB. So if to take that commutator and square it. Okay, so what do we do? So we got B, AB, then we have a B inverse and AB inverse. Okay. And then we have to square that. Okay, sorry about that. All right. Um, so, you know, now we just have to like do some manipulations. So we have BA, BB inverse is the identity, and AB inverse, that's just B inverse A inverse. And we square. Um, Okay, um, now we might try and write BA as A cubed B. I mean, I, there's so many different ways to do this question, but um, I'm just doing one. We might write this. And so the B, B inverse cancels and we get A cubed times A inverse, that's A squared. Squared, that's A to the fourth and A to the fourth is the identity and we're okay. Okay, and at this point, so um, therefore, phi, I'll say, we could say it like phi can be used to define a homomorphism. A 
Okay. And, um, and that's the end of like, that's what I was looking for, for this question. Um, now I want to like explain how we would do, um, how we would prove that phi is one to one and on to, and probably, oh, um, okay, this is a good question. Um, this is the question is, if any of the three relations didn't hold, the mapping would not be a homomorphism. Um, actually, what the problem with the relations not holding is that the thing called phi is not well-defined. Okay, so I mean, a homomorphism has to be a function. So what we're saying is that it's not even a function, right? So like the problem would be just continue. Okay, um, yeah, I'll just say one little bit about it. But um, yeah, the problem would be is that, um, you know, you have R squared equals E. And how we define phi of r squared is just phi of r times phi of r. And how we define phi of the identity is phi of the identity equals the identity. That has to hold for a homomorphism. Okay, so now it's a big problem if this is not equal to this because r squared is equal to the identity. Okay, but phi of r squared is not equal to phi of the identity. That is a problem. So that's really what we're checking here um, for questions like this. Okay, so now um, instead of proving that phi is one to one and on to, we're gonna prove that there's, um, there's an inverse of phi. So we're gonna define psi from D4 to G and We want, um, you know, our goal is like psi is just phi inverse, okay? And if we do like some uh, scratch, like some aside calculations, we have that phi of r equals a b and phi of s equals b. So we should put psi of b equals s. We should have that psi of a times psi of b equals r. Okay. Well, that means if this is S, then we need to have psi of A times S equals R, or um, the inverse of S is also S. So we should put psi of A equals RS. Okay, and define, so that is our scratch calculation. Then we're gonna define psi to, to be that. And then we have to check the relations again. So this will be like a more practice, I guess. So psi of, um, so define psi by psi of A equals RS and psi of, um, psi of B equals S. Okay, and again, now D4 is still ge is generated by A and B up here. So this is enough. Once I tell you what psi of A and psi of B is, this is enough to tell you what psi of any element of D4 is, as long as all the relations of D4 are upheld by psi. So that's really what we have to check now. Okay. Okay, so now check. Um, you know, the relations, we have to check that psi of A to the fourth equals the identity. We have to check that psi of B squared equals the identity. And we have to check that psi of B, psi of A equals psi of A cubed psi of B. Okay, and I will use our definition of psi. Um, A becomes RS, so we have to check RS to the fourth, and we have to check um, S squared. Well, 
already we remember, let me write down the relations of G again. That is S squared equals R squared equals the identity and commutator of S and R squared equals the identity. Um, but if I rewrite this commutator, so um, the commutator is SR, S inverse, R inverse. And if I square that, I get this. Um, and in this group, S inverse and S are the same because S times S equals the identity. So this is really just SR to the fourth. So that is that relation. Okay. So when we check RS to the fourth, let's see what happens. Well, we get RS, 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 RS. Um, now I know that SR to the fourth is SR, 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 SR. Okay, and that almost matches up with this. Okay, so if I rearrange this equation, it just says RS, 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 R. I multiply on the left by S. Um, this is equal to S, sorry, um, SR, SR. Oh yeah, so if I rearrange this equation, it just becomes um, RS, 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 R equals S. Sorry, just by multiplying on the left by S and because S squared equals the identity. Okay, so actually this part is S. So this is S times S, which is S squared, which is the identity. Okay, now we check psi of B. Psi of B is just S and psi, psi of B squared is S squared and that's the identity. And finally we check um, psi of A times psi of B, or psi of B times psi of A, that's just S times RS. And then we check psi of A cubed times psi of B, that's just um, RS, 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 and then psi of B is S. Okay, and we have to check is SRS equal to RS, RS, R. Okay. So are these equal? It turns out that yes, it, um, you know, um, because we can, we can rearrange this relation to look like this. So SR, 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 SR equals the identity. Now we multiply on the right by R. So we get SR, 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 S equals R. And we multiply on the right by S. We get SR, SR, SR equals RS. We multiply on the right by R. Then we get S R S R S equals R S R. And then, you know, keep on doing that. You multiply by S next. And then multiply by R and then you're done. Okay. So this relation, which is just the relation that psi of B times psi of A equals psi of A cubed times psi of B, just comes from the re relation SR to the fourth equals the identity. Okay, so that one holds. Okay, so now we have a homomorphism from G to D4, and then we have a homomorphism back from D4 to G. Um, but it doesn't really, that's fine, but it didn't really explain, well, they should be inverses, but we didn't really say enough about it. 
But let's just make sure that they're the inverses. Okay, so we have, let's summarize, we have five from D4 to, oh, sorry, we have five from G to D4. We have psi from D4 to G. And when I look at phi, A goes to, um, oh, sorry, R gets mapped to, I think, A, B, and S gets mapped to B. And then um, psi takes, um, a to RS and B to S. Okay. And then the way we defined psi was we just checked that. But um, If we look at, um, like if we look at, so we have phi of S equals B and psi of B equals S. And we also have um, phi of R equals AB. And psi of A equals RS, okay. Um, but the way we, we found psi was that, well, like psi of AB is just um, RS times S, which is R. And, right, and if we look at phi of SR, well, that's just, um, sorry, phi of RS, that's just um, a b times b, which is a. Okay, so how do we under how do we um, explain that phi is one to one and on to? Well, there's just we. So notice. Um, Phi and psi are both on to. Because, like, um, for example, phi is on to. Because um, phi of S is B and phi of RS is A. So A and B generate D4 and they are in the image of phi. So since they generate D4 um, and they're both in the image, um, the entirety of D4 is in the image. This is because um, A and B are both in the image of phi and A and B generate D4. And similarly, R and S are in the image of psi. And so, and because R and S generate G, um, G is contained in the image of psi. Okay, so phi, psi both onto. Okay. Um, why are they both one-to-one? -one? Well, either you have to show that they're inverses. Um, I think this is not too bad. Um, like you can check that 
phi composed with psi is the identity and psi composed with phi equals the identity. So this would be the identity on D4 and And to check this, well, you have to just, to check that you have the identity on D4, you just have to check that um, when you plug in A and B on both sides, you just get A and B respectively. Okay, so if you get the identity on, on in both of these equations, then, um, then these are truly inverses. Okay, um, now I'm getting like a little bit far off track, so I'll just stop there. Okay. Luckily, um, the other two questions hopefully shouldn't take long. Um, let us just take a, just a quick three minutes, no, let's say five minutes. Um, and then new question three and four when we come back. Okay, uh, thank you.